It is Friday, June 15th. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. I'm going to take this video to just kind of summarize everything that Verizon is offering now that we have this new edition, the new Above Unlimited plan, which is going to be offered starting June 18th. So what you guys see here on this chart is you've got your single line, two line, three line, and four line or more breakdown for each of the three plans that Verizon offers for unlimited data. The Go Unlimited is their basic tier. Beyond it used to be their premium is now kind of their middle ground. And then now we have their new premium offering, which is the Above Unlimited. You can see the line breakdown for the cost. Definitely pause the video if you want to take a look and analyze kind of what you've got going on there. Um, you could see that with four lines, the cost is obviously much more friendly uh, to the consumer. But as a single line, the above and limit is very pricey at $95. I do believe it is the most costly of all the major carriers and limited plans. Now, the standard definition that's offered in the Beyond and in the Go Unlimited, and then the HD 720p is offered in the Beyond and the Above. So, some of the features vary, and you definitely want to take a look at the small print if you're considering these offerings. Now, what I want to do actually is I want to switch over a little bit, kind of change gears to a comparison of what's offered in the market from the four major carriers. So, starting with like the lower tier offerings, ATT's lower tier offering is $45 per month for the first line. Do keep in mind that they do charge $30 for the uh, line access fee. So, that's actually truly more like a $75 plan. Uh, the AT&T Unlimited Plus is kind of like their uh, premium offering. So it's $60 per month plus the $30 line access fee puts it at $90. Now the Sprint Unlimited Freedom Plan is 60 per month and it is their only unlimited offering. They don't have like a basic and then a more premium plan. So that's what they offer. And then the T-Mobile uh, One Plan is $70 per month, all taxes and fees included. Very attractive price point considering all of those things. Now in terms of pricing, uh, you know, Verizon probably offers the most expensive offering um, in terms of the premium end. But as the Go Unlimited plan, you're at $75 per month, which is just a little bit more expensive than T-Mobile. And of course, Sprint is a little bit cheaper than T-Mobile there. So the value in those plans is is pretty good. Uh, you're not getting the, the, the high video resolution or anything like that, but it definitely works well in terms of cost as an unlimited plan. Now, switching to the more premium variations, T-Mobile offers the OnePlus for $80 per month, and then Verizon their Beyond Unlimited is 85, and then the new above would put it at 95 per month. So um, definitely something to consider between the premium and the basic plans that they offer. Now I'm gonna switch over to this chart. This kind of summarizes everything that you get with each of those plans. The only one that's not included is the new Verizon Above Unlimited, which is gonna cost $95, uh, and it'll raise the, the data throttle or the deprioritization value. Um, it'll raise it up to 75 gigabytes. And then also it's going to give you 20 gigabytes of uh, tethering hotspot data. And that cost would be $95. So, you know, go ahead and pause the video, take a look at what these lines would cost you over the course of a year uh, or two years, you know, like the typical length of an installment plan on a device. So that's something to consider. You could see that, you know, Sprint probably offers the best value in terms of cost. Um, in terms of like value and performance, you might have to go more towards like the Verizon Beyond Unlimited or the T-Mobile One Plus to get a more premium experience where you're getting more features, higher video resolution, deprioritization at a higher value, things of that nature. Now this is what it would cost, you know, and pause the video if you like, this is what it would cost for multiple lines. So you get the first line breakdown, second, third, and then four or more line breakdown per line. And you could see what the monthly cost would be. You could see that, um, you know, in terms of multiple lines, the T-Mobile One plan is very attractive at 160 bucks. Uh, the Sprint Unlimited, uh, pretty much the same. It's in within the same, um, kind of uh, cost there. So I think it's it does, with tax and fees, go up to about 190 bucks. That's the nice thing about T-Mobile. The price you see is the price you pay. It's definitely a perk. And with AT&T, they kind of hide the, the line access fee, which you have to include, and it's $30 per line. So with four lines, you're talking about 120 bucks in just line access fees. And then you can see the Verizon cost there as well. So I don't, you know, my kind of like my summary on this and why I chose to make this video, I think it's important to see what each company is really offering and how the landscape has changed in the last year or so. Uh, so considering cost to features, you know, as, as kind of like value, the best is still Sprint in terms of single line. Uh, in terms of premium lines, premium plans, I think T-Mobile One Plus plan is probably the best way to go. You get a more improved network over Sprint and it's definitely cheaper than Verizon and AT&T. Um, it includes, you know, taxes and fees is all, you know, bundled up into the cost. So it's very attractive there. Now, in terms of multiple lines, I think with all carriers, you probably win because the line value uh, does kind of go down in terms of how much you're paying per line. Uh, so Verizon may become attractive once you've got two, three, or even four lines of service. So it does improve the value to do that, as does T-Mobile and AT&T. Uh, Sprint probably still has the best offer in terms of cost. But, you know, considering network performance, maybe they're not up to snuff compared to T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon. Now... I want to kind of end the video with this 
this bottom line, like what's the fallout from the new Verizon above unlimited plan? And I definitely expect a response, an answer, if you will, from T-Mobile. I don't think T-Mobile is going to just let Verizon one-up them. Uh, you could see that they up the ante on the hotspot data and they up the ante on the deprioritization value at 75 gigabytes. Uh, so I would expect an answer from T-Mobile. And the first thing I think T-Mobile is going to do, and I feel very confident in this, I think T-Mobile is going to raise their soft data cap from 50 gigs to at least 80 gigs. And I'm thinking maybe actually they'll raise it to 100 gigs as their deprioritization cutoff. I feel very confident in this. I think T-Mobile is actually going to probably respond very swiftly and maybe do this within you know a day or two. So we'll, I'll kind of keep my eyes out for that. I think it's going to happen very soon. Now, in terms of cost, I think T-Mobile is going to keep the cost the same. I don't think they're going to raise any pricing just because they're raising that soft data cap. So I would say maybe they'll also increase their hotspot data, tethering data amount. So you know we'll kind of see what happens there. That's just my prediction. And the last thing, I think Sprint is probably going to match whatever T-Mobile does. I think you know T-Mobile and Sprint are now so tied together in terms of the market and what they're offering and their value. I think they're going to respond to whatever T-Mobile does. So what do you guys think T-Mobile is going to do? Give me your predictions and your thoughts on what you think they're going to do. And the last thing I want to cover here is uh, in terms of Verizon, you know, now that they've launched this new unlimited data plan, I've, I, I kind of think back to about a year and a half ago when they first brought back unlimited. You know, The network had slowed a bit in my experience. Not much, but testing the network definitely showed that it had slowed. Uh, they kind of responded by changing video resolution restrictions. They started to deprioritize more, manage the network more, manage the hotspot data allowances, and the network really rebounded. I see speeds and capacity has definitely restored recently within the last six to eight months. And I think now with this, you know, this improvement in the network performance, Verizon's now confident in offering a higher soft data cap threshold, upping the ante to 75 gigs, as long as people are willing to pay the premium for those features. So if you have Verizon, does this change anything for you? Is it still not enough in value you know, to utilize the above unlimited data plan. Are you switching to it? If so, are you switching from the go or are you switching from the beyond plan? You know, I, I probably won't change any of my lines except for possibly one of them where, um, you know, we might be able to take advantage of that higher data threshold, uh, the 75 gigs and the 20 gigs of hotspot data. You know, outside of that, I, I think I'm going to keep mine the same. I just don't think I need to change it for whatever reason. But uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts and opinions. If you're considering switching any of the topics that I mentioned, any of the features, you know, are you going to change any of your plans? Does this make Verizon more attractive? Anything you guys have thoughts and opinions, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, please like the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. This is Steve from Steve Mobile Tech, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.